So welcome, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so a bit about us. I'm, I'm Paul van Genuchten. I work in the, in the ISRIC, World Soil Information in Wageningen in the Netherlands. And uh, over there we maintain some 10 uh, catalogs, mostly project-oriented. Um, and uh, Tom Kralidis, I'm a senior geospatial architect with the Meteorological Service of Canada, long-time contributor to uh, open source and open standards, and currently serving on the board of directors. So that's us. Um, what if? So this is the typical record you find in a lot of catalogs. And then you're reading and say, hey, wow, that, that name, that's not correct. That guy went out of service a while. How can I notify anybody of, of this, this change in the metadata? That, that's a, a thing that I, I notice a lot. For example, a service being not available anymore, and I want to notify somebody. It would be really nice if there is this added me on Git uh, link, and, uh, which you typically find on these MKDocs type uh, documentation websites. And you would click that, and you would go into Git, and you would be able to make a pull request or create an issue about, about the thing. And uh, somebody would go in and change it, and uh, review it, and it would be published to the catalog again. It would also give you this nice overview, like who changed what in my catalog over the last two years, over the last 20 years, because a lot of these data sets stay in that catalog for a long time. So that was kind of the original goal of this exercise, um, to have a workflow like this. So let's start with, with the tools that we're using here. So uh, PyGeometa, um, let's step in, Tom. PyGeometa is a, uh, it's a Python package to generate and manage metadata for geospatial data sets. So we all know geospatial metadata is hard and complex, and PyGeometa is uh, you know, metadata for the rest of us, as we call it, which allows you to do metadata in a, sort of a configuration-based way, and you can generate whatever, uh, whatever formats you wish uh, from that. And it, it's driven by this metadata control file, or MCF, which is basically a YAML uh, grammar to be able to document your, uh, your data set. So uh, I asked Tom to step in here because he, he started an initiative of, uh, in 2008. When was that? Quite a 2009. Well, that's, that's almost, is that 15, 17 years ago? <laughs> And that, that lived silently somewhere on the, on the internet and then recently got a lot of attention. Uh, because this YAML format, is, is, we all know it. It, 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 it versions really well on Git instead of the JSONs and the XMLs. So if we store a metadata file on Git, YAML is a perfect format. Um, so how do we get from that MCF to the catalog? Um, so we use this PyGeometer library to convert that, that MCF file to ISO or whatever other format, because PyGeometa has a, a number of output schemas, such as DCAD um, and, and some American, and, and quite a range of output schemas. And then we load it into the catalog. Can be GeoNetwork, like we just saw. It can also be uh, CCAN or any of the other ones. We, we chose PyCSW, because uh, for us it's really uh, easy to maintain and very flexible and it has a strong focus on OGC standards, which is for us really important. Um, and uh, through its OGC API records uh, format, uh, API, it uh, also uh, supports an HTML front end because you can every request every record in an HTML format. And um, having this uh, um, identifier for every record is also very useful for your search engines because the search engines require one web page per record. So do my colleagues like this MCF? Um, YAML is quite, quite a challenge for some, especially if they're used to, to fancy web forms and LinkedIn and Facebook. So at first, the answer is no. They, they're a bit hesitated to, to create these, these uh, um, YAML files in Git. And that's where we came up with this uh, model-driven uh, metadata editor, which is a standalone metadata editor uh, that lives out there in the, in the, uh, on GitHub. 
It's a fully client-side thing, so you uh, have a web form based on JSON schema of the MCF, and uh, you populate the fields, and at some point you say save, save as um, MCF file, and you then upload that to Git, or send by email to the administrator. Um, do my tech colleagues like uh, the MCF? Yes, they do very much. Um, Optimal for Git version control, uh, offers a fully traceable catalog, what changed, what not. And file base is actually quite easy to, to uh, uh, modify. You just do a search and replace, and you have uh, the whole catalog updated. Um, and then you can also do a lot of things in memory using Python scripts. Uh, so you don't need to always uh, go into uh, changing one fi file by file. So now I want to show kind of the benefits of this of this workflow in two use cases. Um, and let me first go to this one. This Lensor Crop Hubs is a, is a European funded research project that we run in, in some uh, countries in East Africa around land, soil, and crop data. And um, we try to spark that community by, by, uh, with this GitHub repository where they can contribute uh, their data sets. Um, initially, they provided metadata in, in, in Excel where each column is a property of a data set and you have all the rows. And then, so we have a, an import function that can import this Excel into the MCF format. And we share that then on GitHub and then they can start the contribution. So you have like an initial population of the, of the, contra, of the catalog. Um, but also they learn to register issues on, hey, that, that record number five is not correct because uh, it changed. And then we use this metadata to create a map server configuration. So we also um, have OGC services on top of the, the TIFF and shapefiles that were described. So we generate a map server map file based on the metadata. So we use the title and the abstract element from the metadata in the map server configuration. That uh, WMS endpoint, which was then generated, is pushed back into the metadata in Git. So users can also find the service from the metadata. And so this keeps this, uh, so the, the, the metadata in the WMS capabilities is then always aligned with the metadata in the catalog. And then on top of that, we have the Terry IGS uh, Viewer framework, which is a client-side uh, open source project from, from Australia. It's a really nice, full-featured web-based GIS system, um, and which has CSW search uh, embedded. So you can do a CSW search from the Terry IGS to find those records, and vice versa, you can go back to the catalog from uh, via the, the link which exists in the WMS capabilities. And then we added an extra integration on PyCSW to say, okay, load this layer that you find in the catalog on the Terry IGS. So that's the linkage from the catalog to the Terry, from the Terry to the catalog. So how does that look? For example, this is Terry IGS. Um, so that's the data set that was found on the catalog and then opened in the Terry IGS. And you have this legion, the options, and a lot of, a lot of tools that you find on typical uh, things. So let me now hand over to Tom for the, for the other use case. You want this one? Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. So um, up until now, we've, uh, we've, we've uh, gone over um, basically using, uh, using PyGeoMeta uh, in support of a simple configuration for geospatial metadata. We've talked about uh, PyCSW as a cataloging capability to be able to publish these metadata records too, although it could be any standards-based catalog. We've also talked about this MDME um, user interface a web application, which basically it's driven, by a, it's driven by a schema. So the technology underneath is you can push, you can uh, configure it with a JSON schema from a standard, and it will automatically populate a web form based on that, uh, based on, based on that schema. And Paul gave his, his use case using all those three tools and those interactions and, and workflows. I'm going to do the same thing on my side with regards to the WMO information system. 
version 2, so or WIS 2. So WIS 2 is a next generation data exchange platform from WMO. Uh, it's 194 uh, countries wide and it's based on uh, open standards and uh, a lot of open source tooling uh, there as well, but basically it's the exchange of earth system data, weather, climate, water data. It could be real-time data, it could be archive data, and anything uh, in between. There's a big focus on event-driven in WIS2, which means PubSub, publish and subscribe. The uh, MQTT specification is a requirement of WIS2, so basically all of the publications, all of the data publications, and all of the metadata publications are all done with uh, PubSub. There is no harvesting, uh, as we may have seen in you know, pre previous, uh, you know, pre previous and current attempts. There's no CSW harvesting or catalog harvesting. Everything is pushed on demand. So you don't have to go pull a catalog server every time to look for new updates. You subscribe to that catalog server and it tells you when there, it pushes an update to you. So very different um, than, the, than the traditional polling case. So we apply that same principle that we do for data with metadata as well. So um, we've also developed, you know, in that spirit, we've developed a number of tools to help, uh, you know, to help weather agencies think about their, their metadata. Because as much as we do data in weather, climate, and water, and WMO, all of that needs to be backed by data set metadata. So we need to define what a data set is, provide a geospatial metadata record that goes into a catalog and that catalog allows somebody to discover that data set, obviously, and find the appropriate linkages so that you can subscribe to that data set. So now users need to be able to create and manage metadata and uh, be, able to, uh, be able to publish it. So one tool that we created, uh, we have a, a prototype tool that's uh, basically no code. So the way it works is um, you know, it helps you manage, verify, and publish metadata and use, uses Git, using GitHub as a, as a content management platform. So um, no catalog, no, uh, no metadata editor, nothing like that. That doesn't mean those things are not useful, but um, for this case, uh, we use this approach. So basically, we're using GitHub to manage, the, to manage the metadata. And we send out metadata to all the data stewards or content, we send out uh, GitHub links to metadata stewards or, or custodians and data providers, and they edit that actual YAML right on GitHub. And they're managed as this MCF or metadata control file format. What happens after that is as soon as that metadata is saved on GitHub, we also take advantage and use GitHub actions. So what we do after that is uh, once we once we save some metadata, the GitHub action triggers, and what it does is takes that MCF format, converts it to the metadata format that we require in WMO, because we, we, we implement something called, we've defined something called the WMO core metadata profile, which is based on OGC API records uh, core record model, and it creates this, this WCMP2 metadata record on the fly. And then what it does is it takes that record and the GitHub action is actually connected to a, an MQTT broker. So it sends that metadata record um, um, to a broker as a, as a new message. And that's how everything populates throughout the system. So there's no transactions, no pushing, pulling, harvesting. Um, there's MQTT event-driven um, publication. So as soon as it gets onto a broker, this circulates throughout the, uh, the WIS2 ecosystem. And there's a catalog somewhere in that pipeline which Takes that, mess, takes that MQTT message of the metadata, which was pushed through a notification, and validates it, does quality assessment, provides a, uh, um, uh, a validation report, it does some KPI, uh, key performance indicator things, all, all these kinds of things, and then it sends back a report through, you guessed it, PubSub, in an event-driven way. And then the WIS2 catalog itself or our global discovery catalog is based on OGC API and records, and you can use something like Metasearch to connect to it and discover these metadata. So um, the basic workflow, whoops, let me go back. I keep going forward. Okay, let's rewind. And we have a broken link. That's weird. Does that work? Maybe not. 
the tab. No problem. So the basic idea here is that we have, that would have been a diagram of everything I just described. And if you, if, uh, um, you, know, if you, if you go online, you'll find that diagram. But it's, it's, it's a bunch of boxes and arrows, okay? So um, having said that, what is, the, what, what is the end game here? The end game is simplifying uh, the management of the content. And we've, we've stripped it down to basically, stripping it right down to basically uh, editing YAML files. And from there, we let all this machinery and all these, uh, you know, these GitHub action um, um, capabilities, everything takes over from there. And never at one point are we actually writing a file everywhere. This is all in memory. And this is using all these pipelines because of all these tools which, are, which can be used, you know, standalone or on the command line, or they can be used as libraries for you to glue inside of your application and your pipeline. So this is super powerful and uh, super flexible, uh, a super flexible approach. Again, it's not the, the you know, this is a, it, these are powerful use cases for, um, these are powerful approaches for these use cases. We're not, we're not downplaying the, the, the need for full-blown metadata editors. They're obviously useful and needed. Um, but in terms of having uh, metadata as a composable and a reproducible pipeline, uh, I think these are really strong examples of trying to move this stuff forward. Paul, over to yourself. Thanks. Yeah, you notice two very motivated people here that work with metadata every day. It seems like a boring job, but actually these, these tools make it fun. Um, so some takeaways for this, for this thing. So this MCF format is actually a really interesting uh, format. Um, for, for managing metadata in local repositories and then bringing it to the outside. Um, Git storage and CI CD workflows, the Git actions, are a very traceable, reproducible, participatory approach for metadata management. And OGC API records, such as PyCW, offers a very uh, clean, machine readable, and human friendly interface to metadata. And then I have some references for if you're checking this online. Some of these libraries are to be released very soon. So Map Server 8.2 has OGC API features um, and SLD support uh, is coming soon, but we already depend on it very, very largely. Um, PyCSW, we're waiting for the OGC API records uh, to get approved by the OGC and then the 3.0 will come but uh, already there's a large adoption of, of the, the 3.0 version. The PyGeodata crawler is the, the Python tool that we have developed that stands on the shoulders of all these great libraries, but does the crawling of the, of the drive. So it scans a drive of data sets for any metadata to be extracted to go into the catalog. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on in this environment. So, any questions, I hope, so we can continue Thank discussion. <laughs> Thank you. And question time. Thanks, very interesting. Um, I saw on the readme that also it supports Stack as export. Could, could you talk a bit about how Stack uh, could be involved? Sure, it's basically another format output. So PyGeometa supports um, the stack item um, output, uh, st the stack item specification, and basically your configuration would end up going out as a stack item. So that's how it, basically that would work. Yeah, and PyCSW as a service has stack API uh, search capabilities, so you can use stack browser to browse the PyCSW catalog. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have a question about this WMO uh, standard. Uh, is it related only to WMO data or in general to meteorological and climate data like uh, ERA5, for example, or other data provided by ECMWF? I guess the answer is yes. Okay. Um, but so both from, 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 all the, from all the member states and from ECMWF and, and UMetSat and so on and so forth. There's also federated activities with Ocean Information Hub and uh, um, uh, Earth System uh, Gateway Federation um, and, and different partners, but it's basically all weather, climate, and water data, which uh, includes all the countries and 
you know, specialized centers such as ECMWF. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you too, more. Assuming you get a uh, distributed uh, setup, uh, so h how fast would be the updates to some of the met metadata so that you know everyone would see the latest updates? And is it the distributed setup with GitHub into catalog or the one with MQTT? Uh, in the GitHub. The GitHub one um, usually is ten seconds. Because the CI/CD uh, usually t sometimes takes some time to kick in because it's it's queued, okay. and then uh, it, it more or less uh, uh, depends on the size of your catalog because it, it goes through the records. But uh, it's usually minutes, okay. which which sometimes is too long, eh? because people that are doing the actual edits uh, want to see instant results to see if they did a good job. But yeah. uh, if you get someone from the other side of the world yeah. looking at the data, you know, yeah. So you'll see. yeah. Thank you. Thank you too. Still in your room. Okay. So many, many thanks. One more time. Thanks. Thank you.